Well, basically, we always live in the same hotel, so it's basically you revisit all the same places. And luckily for us, the, yeah, the venue is very close to, to the hotel, and also, I mean, it's the very center, so it's always nice to, you know, revisit all the historical, historical things here. But now it's done, so now I can just focus on uh, playing chess, you know, this mass program is finished, sort of. And um, yeah, then we'll see. Uh, yes, actually, in some way. Like, f for me, it's a bit weird. I was in, um, in Magnus' team twice in a row. But it's funny, like, you know everything about it, but also you don't know a thing, because I've never been to, to the match itself. Like the last time I was, um, yeah, I was uh, at the match was I think when Boris played Vichy in Moscow like many, many years ago. I was like 16 or something, so I didn't have a, like a single idea on uh, what chess is actually at the top level. And then with Magnus, yes, like I, I could predict first 20 moves, but I, I've never seen the venue. I've never, I mean, felt the attention and stuff. And now finally, I will be there to finally, like after two cycles, finally I'll witness it, uh, you know, for real. Uh, what's going on there? It's quite a relief, actually, not to not to be in someone's team and uh, not to care too much about the result. So yeah, we'll see. Also, Astana is surprisingly. I've sp I've spent quite a lot of time there. It's surprisingly very, very chess city. Like I would normally be re uh, be recognized like ten times more often than in Moscow, and also the population of Moscow is way uh, way more than than Astana's. Like, my, my calculation was that basically chess is like 50 times more popular in, in Astana than in Moscow. Which is quite something, because Moscow is also a chess city. So yeah, being in Astana, when you're a chess player, is always nice, to be honest. Like, you can never be, uh, you know, in trouble. Everybody will try to help you. You'll, you'll normally be, be recognized once, I don't know, in an hour or something. So people won't let you lose yourself. Yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly, but it's not, it's not just about me, it's just any grandmaster, like, they, they know everybody. They actually have a very, uh, very, very strong team there, especially women's team, like, they're extremely good. Asobayeva won, I think, two World Blitz Championships in a row. Uh, Abdul Malik is very good. I mean, they're all good, I think it's only a matter of time when, uh, when they will have, like, strong male grandmasters. But in general, like, chess is extremely popular there, so yeah. Finally, I think the yeah, the place is proper, sort of, for the match. Yeah, we'll see. I'm quite excited. I would say it will be very much about Ding. This is my uh, general impression. Like, I would say Ding's A game is uh, better than Jan's. And also Jan's B game is much better than Ding's B game. So I think it's either Ding is in a brilliant shape and he wins, or he is not, and then um, Jan is a massive favorite. I mean, at least to me, we'll see. Also, with Ding, normally, you know, you, uh, you play all those people. It's kind of normal that you're doing well against someone and then you're doing, uh, doing badly against someone else. With Ding, exactly, I could never really get what the problem is. Like, we played many games in Rapid and uh, uh, somehow, I mean, I understand this was, this was a role. I was just lucky. I mean, it happens, you know, sometimes you, you just feel that uh, someone is running like crazy good against you and the other way around, and I was running very well against Dink, it's not, uh, I mean, about his chess. But still, somehow you feel like, okay, what's, uh, what's the problem against him? You, I mean, you just play solid, you, you don't wonder, and uh, you hope to win. Yeah, I would say, uh, to me, Jan is, uh, I don't know, 60-40 for Jan, maybe, or something. Well, it really depends. I mean, it also uh, depends on uh, how much I'm invested in, you know, helping them. Yeah, I mean, I could, it could be wrong advice too. For Dink, I would say just try to play slow games and see what happens. And for Jan, I would say basically play the sharpest lines possible and try to beat him in the complications somehow. So normally, as normal, as normal advice is clearly would be exactly the opposite sort of, yeah, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, also, I'm used to, like, I'm used to advising the guy who basically doesn't need my, my, my advices, yes? So it's, uh, I mean, I've never thought about advices this seriously. With Magnus, I guess, like, the normal advice would be just, you know, go play. It's fine. Like, you're a decent player. Most probably you will not lose. No, I think with Magnus, literally, I think I can share this. I think there was literally... 
a story, I, I'm not sure this was the match exactly, but I think there was literally a story when I would have to send him the, the file with some, you know, notes. And like I looked at the position and uh, blah, blah, and then like two hours later, I was okay, fine. I'm ready to send it. And I sent it. And like, I mean, I added a few words, like, go play, good luck, I think this uh, position is good for you, your style, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, in the morning, I realized he, he replied with something, like something else or, or something he asked. And then I somehow realized I, I actually forgot to, to attach the file. I just sent him this, you know, good luck, buddy. But he didn't, uh, didn't look disappointed at all. I think he won the game. Oh, well, okay, sure. Mm, I would say no. No, I think Magnus is uh, Magnus is underestimated as a, you know his straightforwardness is uh, underestimated. When he says something, he normally means it, and uh, it, it's not. I mean, it's not ground groundbreaking. And he is that he's not very happy with the format, and then is that he doesn't want to really play these matches again and again. And he mentioned it many times, so I mean, it should have happened some point uh, yeah I don't know like I would say there is no uh, like there is no deep deep idea behind it I think he just doesn't want to play he he doesn't play it's not some uh, like equity based or something it's not that he's like really thinking about his glory and like I won what is it six or seven matches in a row and now if I win or I lose it's a good risk reward or bad risk reward I don't think he uh, he really considers that at the first point. I think his main idea is that, okay, like I won all the matches, I just don't want to play this like 14 or 16 classical games that can last for uh, seven hours each. I had enough of, of it, and uh, if you guys d don't want to, uh, to play rapid, then I just leave and uh, have fun there, sort of. Uh, well, I don't know. I, uh, I mean, my hope is yes, my guess is probably no, to be honest. Like, people are normally worried because in chess, like, we, it's not exactly tennis, we don't have uh, too much money. And uh, they normally say, like, once you start making arguments for, like, changing the system and stuff, they normally say, uh, buddy, stop it, this World Championship match is the only, is the only thing we can actually sell for, like, millions. And, uh, yeah, we should not... Uh, you know, we, we really need it. And they have this mantra and there is, not, uh, there is not much to do about it. Like I'm normally saying, okay, but you have this like very strange cycle that goes forever. I mean, also no one understands what's going on in the cycle. And also it's not exactly uh, like stable, I would say. Like you have a billion of tournaments, but at the end of the day, it's normally decided by, by luck anyway. So normally you, you have these candidates and what people don't understand, yes, you need to play very well to, to win the candidates, but actually it's not the winner who, who decides who will qualify, it's actually like two worst players. Like there is one guy against whom they will both lose all the games, and against another guy they will make short draws with white, sort of. Or let's say it's the last candidates, Jan played very well, and I mean it's a well-deserved win and so on, but again, I mean... Uh, I mean, Alireza plays bullet all night uh, before the game against him, then he goes and loses with white. And then, uh, before some, uh, you know, game against Fabi, for instance, Alireza decided to sleep. And he plays well, and the game finishes his draw. So this is what people don't understand, actually, is that we have the cycle, it goes forever, and still at the end, it's a very, very random thing. So, yeah, my personal opinion is that it's a, it's a strange system. And also with Magnus, it's not that it has always been the case, but with Magnus, I don't really get, like, but the guy is, what, 20, 50, 60? Like, do you really not know who is the best player? Like, why do you need this, like, two years of suffering for uh, for all the players to finally make Magnus play the match and win? Like, can't you get it if if one guy is 20, 50, and the second one is 27, 92, and he beats him, like, plus four? Like, what do you think? Sort of. Uh, this is this is my um, general opinion, but I think it will be very hard actually to to remove the match and change the system. We'll see. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Well, it really. I mean, when you are a decent player yourself, you can just 
feel it. Normally, it's not even only about the results, but when you talk to the guy, I mean, also his results are quite, you know, impressive and uh, he doesn't need to, to talk a lot. But you can feel it actually when the player is uh, this big. Like, for instance, yesterday you had these photos, right? I mean, Noderbeck and me were like analyzing and looking at stuff. I mean, even there we are just having fun, but you can, I mean, looking at Kramnik, you can actually sometimes, you know, just wow. He sees something and it's like crystal clear for him. And then for Noderbeck and me, it takes like a minute to actually realize, yes, he's probably right. I mean, I played some tra uh, training games against him as well. Like we played some rapid and blitz. You can win many games, but still sometimes you just see this uh, flashy moments and you're like, wow, he spends like two, two seconds for, uh, for a decision that is, not, that is not obvious at all. With Magnus, I've seen it so many times, actually, it's just unbelievable. Like sometimes you, you're having dinner, there's some position discussed and he's like looking at it briefly and he says, yeah, this and that probably works. And you're like, wow, he's probably right, actually, why didn't we think about it? So with Magnus, yeah, for me, it's... Uh, the only person, the only person in the world against him is, uh, you know, really tough. Like you can win games, you can win matches, but still, at the end of the day, I would say, uh, if Magnus plays his A game, he will beat anyone, sort of me, me included, obviously. And for the rest of the people, it's not uh, that obvious, at least I would say. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, I mean, clearly, uh, Rapid is better. Like it's not. The, the thing is, it's not that classical chess is struggling. I mean, once again, one of the main problems in chess is, is actually that uh, the number of people kind of involved is very big, and the number of people who actually understand what's going on is very small. And then, like, it's normally you have this uh, incompetent majority that kind of uh, makes, makes conclusions. So there is nothing wrong with classical chess in general. But what, what classical chess used to be, is it actually, uh, I mean, in Soviet times, for instance, they, they would have like two hours for uh, 40 moves and then uh, they would have like one extra hour for the next 20 moves and so on and so on. And this was normal. And it would still be uh, normal nowadays. The difference is that like there is this theory, there are openings. So the, the point is that like in Soviet times, they would normally like blitz out, let's say 10 moves. And then they would, ha they would have to play 30 moves from like a random position that they are not like exactly aware of or they're like aware but it's not that they have studied it and they know they are uh, correct and all the stuff it's not that they have it analyzed brilliantly to move 40 right so they would have uh, like let's say two hours to play 30 moves like hard 30 moves and this is normal and today it would also be normal but the problem is that today normally the game starts at move like 25 sometimes sometimes 30 and then you have these two hours to play 10 moves, not 30. And this makes the difference. So this is a problem. Like, let's say if uh, for some reason we tomorrow will switch for uh, Fisher Random, the classics will be back. Like, everybody will, will be enjoying it again. But nowadays it just looks like, okay, you, you basically bang like uh, 30 moves, then you have two hours for like two not completely obvious decisions, and then at move 40 you, you have an additional hour. So it, it, it basically becomes very difficult to, to lose a game. Like, you, you need to be completely idiot. And uh, yeah, with, with 30 moves to play, two hours was completely fine. So now, nowadays, again, it's either they change the starting position, or, uh, yeah, or they limit the time. I kind of like both. It's not even about fish or random, like, uh, you can have some draw, Let's say you have a draw, like after which some random uh, random pawn is moved for like one square. Like the a2 pawn is on h3, let's say, and h7 pawn is on h6. And the classics will be back. It's a completely di different position. People will, will start thinking from one if they have not analyzed it. And it will all be fine. Like people will be trying to figure out for like 30 minutes, okay, what changed in the Nidorf, what changed there, what changed there, what should I play, which opening is better with a pawn on a3 which is worse and so on. But with this exact position that we have, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's analyzed a bit too well. So, if, I mean, if you want to play this one, I kind of like it too, but then we have to play rapid, I guess. I clearly, uh, yeah, clearly felt it. I think it was a thing for real. I also think uh, it was, you know, this boom of online exactly was also very much related to the fact that uh, 
who basically uh, didn't have a choice really. And I remember my own feelings. Uh, I guess I was stuck in, uh, yeah, I was stuck in Yekaterinburg after candidates. I mean, this COVID started like you cannot really move. I mean, I spent, I think I ended up, I ended up spending like three months there or something. And uh, I mean, I could not really go anywhere. And uh, yeah, at some point I was invited to this uh, Magnus Tour event. I think we had four, like the first year of the pandemic, they had four tournaments. Uh, I was not invited in the first one, I was watching it closely, I was like, wow, like, they play online, finally, they, they play on the Blitz, it's very interesting actually to see if they will manage to sort of keep concentration and stuff, and also we didn't have all of the board tournaments, it was like, wow, let's actually look at it. Then I was invited in the second one, I was really motivated once again, you finally found a way, I mean, it's a strange way, but you found some way to play this very, very elite. And you're like, it's cool, and there are only four, uh, four events a year. I was really motivated, I've shown a lot of opening ideas, they're like, I really wanted to win, and actually, won, and, and, and actually won. But then, you know, it was a brilliant first year, but then, I, I think now, what we have is that, like, it's a cool game, it's, it's basically a computer game to some extent, and also you don't really need it, because like, when it was pandemic, no one really knew who is the best player in the world, and you had to watch these tournaments to find out. Like, there was nothing else. Now there is, I mean, all of the board is back, basically, okay, we play here the Armageddon, for instance, why would you go and watch some title Tuesday, uh, is my question. So, I guess it's not, uh, I mean, it was not exactly about online, it, it was about the pandemic. It, it was like the only way for people to actually play chess and watch chess, which is not the, the case anymore. And I would say the, um, the popularity will probably decrease, whatever they do online. And also, my impression is that uh, the, the motivation of players will also decrease. Like when it started, for instance, yeah, we had like four, four tournaments a year, like elite tournaments, I wanted to win. It's basically like Magnus won, I think, two or three, I won one. I was like, wow, I was proud. Now, I mean, they had a billion of these tournaments, like everybody has won it at least once, uh, more or less, there is nothing to be proud of. And they have it each month. And you're like, okay, I'll not play this time, I'll play next time. Yeah, if. If I won't do well this time, I will have like 10, 10 more chances this year and so on. And uh, yeah, I don't think it will be ever this popular again. But it's nice that at least both, uh, both fans and players have this other sort of space to go. I personally quite hate it. So it's like if I'm ever given a choice to play over the board or online, I mean, there is no way I'm choosing online. Sort of. No, but it's also... That's what I'm saying, you know, it's also because I don't really care. That's the thing, like normally chess is very much about ego, it's individual sport. And I mean, if, I mean, let's say yesterday we, we played that Blitz, I'm pretty sure, I mean, okay, we're joking, we're having fun, but like we, we are all tracking the record. And of course, like people don't want to lose, even this friendly game. If it's always the board, you look at the guy, I mean, you, you somehow you know, start start pushing yourself. With online, I really don't care. And I, I mean, I simply cannot uh, push myself to like spend four, four hours at home, basically with this monitor, you know, and laptop, and you just play some stupid online game. And then your mood basically uh, depends on the way how you will do in this online game. And I'm, for me, it's just, you know, like a negative emotional free roll, sort of. Like, if I do well, I am like, okay, there is nothing to, you know, to be uh, unhappy about. But there is nothing to be happy about too, because you just spent four hours playing some stupid thing. And then, if you play badly, then it's even worse. You are like, okay, I spent four hours playing the stupid online, and then I even lost. And it's like, uh, you didn't care at the, in the beginning, but then when you lose, you actually realize you would prefer to win, sort of. But you don't win to win this much that you will, you know, stop everything and co uh, concentrate on it. So yeah, I mean, it's... Uh... When you go somewhere else, at least it's fun, you know, you can order some drink or like whatever, you can uh, make yourself believe that actually you're trying to enjoy this. And when you are like stuck home, you're alone and you're playing these games with like long breaks, and you can only drink water and it's like they, they want you to like show your whole flat and what's going on in this room and stuff, I mean, uh, it's, it's impossible for me to believe that, uh, that I try to, to enjoy it. When you're somewhere else, at least it's cool, you're like, okay, I mean, 
I'm in the bar, I could be playing over the board, I'm playing like this, okay, sure, it's just... I think th uh, 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 there were a couple of tournaments where I actually... It's funny, I played for, from, from a bar, I guess, and then somehow I would start the tournament. I would start it nicely, like I won a couple of games from industry games, and then somehow I just forgot about it. Like, I, I would get into some, uh, some conversation, and then I, by round six, I, I was like, ah, I actually played, sure, but yeah. I don't. No, I don't think you can really, uh, I don't think you can really overcome it. But with online, at least I can, like, honestly say to myself that, like, deep inside, I don't really care. Like, I don't like losing, but it's more like, losing online is more, is more like losing at, uh, at anything else. Like knife throwing, for instance. I mean, it can also be annoying to lose a competition against your friend or, I mean, whatever. But, uh, yeah, it's not such a big deal. And over the board, I don't think you will, like, ever get anywhere if, you, if you're not upset after losing. So over the board, my, my advice would be not to lose. And online, I think you just don't care. It's not rated, it's not official. People could be cheating. I mean, there are so many excuses that you can uh, use that I guess uh, you can just say to yourself, okay, this is just random, I'm just playing, I'm hoping for, for everyone to play fair, I'm hoping for, uh, for me to do well, but I will not really uh, like gamble too many emotions on it because you never know what's, uh, what's gonna happen online. Like you can be really invested in it, you can prepare and then you'll just di disconnect, disconnect for five seconds and that's it. I mean, f f for me, it's hard to be really serious about that. It really depends, but uh, yeah, I don't know. My impression is that chess is becoming more of, uh, I mean, recently professional chess is becoming is more of uh, an exhibition show. It feels to me that uh, everybody plays every single tournament, more or less. No one really cares. Like, they all want to do well in general, but no one wants to win this exact tournament. When we used to have, uh, let's say, I don't know, four or five super tournaments a year, there were only four, you know, at some point, and people wanted to win them. Now it's like you have eight, basically people want to play uh, six or seven uh, to be played well. They don't really care if they will win too many or not, they just want to, uh, to secure this place and this uh, like pool, of, pool of players who, who would be invited everywhere. And then somehow it's like I realize that I stopped even following to some extent the tournaments because I mean okay like people play each week like one tournament is finished another tournament has started the same guy plays like one match online then two hours later he plays over the board you, you're not even sure like what's online and what's over the board and so on and there are not too many tournaments that uh, everybody wants to win to be honest I mean it used to be Maybe the Tata still, but even the Tata still, I mean, once you go there and you like experience this brilliant weather and stuff, you, you can also say to yourself that, uh, I mean, okay, if I win it, nice, but if not, it's also just I won't go again anyway, uh, most probably. So it's hard to tell. And also with Magnus, like one of the problems, I think, that Magnus brought to chess, I think in general Magnus' appearance was very good. But one of the problems was that everybody knew that basically like to, to become the world champion you need to beat Magnus and then you need to win the candidates to qualify for the match. And the problem is that actually like qualifying to the candidates and then winning it, it takes a lot. I mean, first of all, you can fail. But even, uh, even if you don't, it takes a lot. Like all the best players who are capable of doing it knew that you have Magnus at the end of the road. And it's not exactly inspiring, you know, because, I mean, Magnus, we all know how, how good he is. And let's say now, when someone else will, will become the world champion in less than, uh, less than a month, probably, yeah? Uh, I mean, in a way, it will open the door. People will start feeling like, okay, if I win the, the candidate, then it's a real shot. I mean, these guys I'm capable of beating, sort of. But with Magnus, no one has ever proven it, yeah? I mean, he, he has barely lost the game. Uh, in those World Championships, so it's, uh, I mean, also in, in, in terms of financial stuff, again, like people would spend like half a year preparing for this candidate. Let's say you win it. You, like, uh, you declined many invitations, you spent some money for your team, for winning stuff, then you play this World Championship match, 
then Magnus beats you and you get what, like 500,000 uh, dollars or something. Like for the best players in the world, it's not exactly a great motivation in terms of financial stuff. Like everybody wants to be the world champion, but no one really believes that uh, he's capable of beating Magnus. And then losing the match is not uh, tempting enough to uh, sort of give a shot to this whole, uh, whole adventure. If Jan or Ding uh, will be established as a world champion, I guess it will be a completely different story. Like I remember, uh, let's say, the candidates when uh, people were qualifying for, for the match against Vichy, Magnus won back then. It felt like it's a completely different event, like everybody wanted to win so much. Because with Vichy, I mean, I respect Vichy, Vichy a lot and stuff, and, and actually after losing to Magnus here, he went on to win the very next candidates. But still, against Vichy, people knew that basically, okay, you can play, you can fight. I mean, Vichy was brilliant, but he was human. And uh, people really wanted it. Now, with Magnus involved, it, it has been uh, not so tempting for uh, many years. Like, look at, let's say, I don't know, MVO, he's probably making, like, I don't know, about a million a year, for instance. Why would he basically, he, I mean, I like him a lot, he, he's a brilliant guy, so why would he ruin his brilliant life in Paris? Uh, why, why would he stop like this walking, like uh, morning with Cousins, with uh, Sebastian Mazze or and stuff? And basically for what? Like at the end of the day, if you are lucky, you qualify for the match against Magnus, where you have like 25-30%. Then most probably you lose. Uh, the quality of your life is worse than uh, like if you wouldn't try it at all. You're upset, you spent like two years for the cycle and then Magnus Magnus beats you and then what, basically. So yeah, this was a problem. Now I guess it will go away for quite some time. I mean, what's considering, I mean, you always consider things, but in general I would say no. Uh, like there is no, in my opinion, uh, like if you want me to be straight, in my opinion, it's kind of strange to ban the players from playing, especially those who don't support what's going on. And then it's like, you know, it's kind of pathetic. Uh, sort of, I changed the federation to be invited in, in the tournaments where I'm not invited because uh, I'm Russian and I don't like it and I think it's the wrong decision. So I'm changing the federation to like make people who made the wrong decision invite me. This is not the way it's uh, gonna work for me. I mean, if you don't like me with uh, the way I am, then I mean, okay, I'm not going to play for uh, some other random country where I've never been or something uh, just to please you and, uh, you know, let yourself invite me. So, yeah, most probably not. I guess like all the things you you mentioned, I've, uh, I've tried, kind of. Writing a book would be nice. I mean, I had some thoughts about it. Let's start with chess. I mean, at least I don't think people will go buy my novel like right after I publish it, yeah, if it's not about chess or something. But yeah. In general, those things are not exactly super new to me. I'll probably try some of them, but in general, I mean, I still play chess, I concentrate on playing. And uh, I mean, again, I have a uh, knife throwing. Yeah, I mean, why would I need this uh, new chess things when I have the, the knife throwing? No, I mean, okay, it's... Uh... Also, the, the, the circumstances are tough. I mean, it's hard to, to imagine my political career in Russia and it's even harder to to imagine political career with a Russian passport somewhere else, so, I mean, yeah, not likely. Nah, okay, you need to be Ali Reza for that, and also you you need to live in Paris, I'm afraid. Even with, with Ali, Ali Reza, by the way, look, the guy has the brightest uh, start, start of career in probably history. De definitely one of the very, very best in history at his age, probably the best, actually. And then, what do we have, like, he has like all the chances to uh, to eventually become the world champion, to at least to qualify for the match against Magnus. And then what is he doing? He's actually sort of quitting uh, to some extent classical chess. He is playing rapid on blitz, and he's starting this fashion career. I mean, no, no one wants to play this match against Magnus. Pe uh, people simply decided that actually if we we'll ignore him, he'll finally leave, and it worked. So uh, and, uh, now may maybe everybody will be back. I mean, Wish, Wish could be back too, actually, is my impression. Wish is crazy good, he's always underestimated. I mean, it was only Magnus that, was co that would cause him problems, you know? 
But even being 62, I guess we should be fine if, uh, if, if Magnus is not there. So yeah, we'll see. But no, no fashion career for me, I'm afraid. I do, but again, we are living in this, uh, you know, turbulent time. And in my situation, it's quite hard to actually predict if you uh, sort of even be allowed to try. So it really depends, like, if I knew uh, I'm safe these terms, and basically if I knew, like, 100% that, uh, like, if I do my part, if I play well, if I, like, beat people and stuff, uh, then I will qualify, then I will be allowed to play, like, everywhere I want and so on and so on. Then I would definitely, this would be my main goal, and, uh, I mean, it used to be my main goal. Now, I mean, it's kind of, kind of on a break, because I'm just trying to figure out what's... Uh, what's going on in the world and if you will be allowed to play or not. I mean, it's strange, like, they have this, uh, they have, like, Russian FIDE president, then they have uh, the Russian candidate who plays the match, uh, the World Championship match, and, and probably win it, and then they have, like, Russian teams banned and Russian players not uh, not really welcomed. So, I mean, it's strange, I don't see how, how all the things work together, then they have some Russian sponsors, but then they say, uh, like they're not Russian. I mean, I don't know, I, I, I'm not really sure actually how this will work in the nearest future, so we'll see. Like once, uh, once uh, the quiet life starts again, I will definitely give it a shot, this is what I can say.